guide in this video, we're going to look at how to make an extended and expandable status bar on your custom live wallpaper. And what I have here are these three pieces. As you can see, my status bar is quite a bit larger and I can click on any of these pieces here and just quickly show some information. Uh, the request I got from a user in KOWP was they wanted to see an alarm, a quick access menu for an alarm, uh, some temperature and weather information real quick as well as some calendar information and notice as I click on these um, it's closing one and opening the other I've mentioned that in previous tutorials but I want to kind of cover that again to make sure we're uh, covering all our bases here and then what I can also do here as you can see I can close each one individually as well using uh, this little arrow down here and that works for all of these now this is using the list global variable and before we dive into all this for those of you just getting started with KOWP then make sure you please have visited idomath.weebly.com slash KOWP where you can get a beginner series. Yeah, it's got a little bit of age on it, but it still covers some of the bare basics that you need in terms of customizing your custom live wallpaper as well as making the best use of the space. Um, overlap groups and stack groups, very important to understand. I'll be using those here. And then we'll also be getting into some animations. But as you can see, there are a ton of tutorials over here. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get started with this tutorial. So inside of KOWP, I'm going to start with a blank preset, start from scratch. And what we want to do here is we want to uh, start off with our globals, I think. Uh, all we need here is one global. I'm just going to be using a global variable that's going to be a list global. And I'm going to call it go. And the four pieces I want to put inside of this are bar. That's going to stand for just when we want to see our extended bar. Also weather, date, alarm since those are the three pieces that I had a moment ago. For now, I'll set this to bar. Now let's go back over to our items and let's start creating our bar. To do that, I'm gonna use an overlap group. And inside of this overlap group, I'm gonna go ahead and rename it too to keep things organized. I'm gonna call this my bar. This is gonna be the black bar that we're going to extend upon our regular status bar on our default uh, Android setup or whatever. So I'm gonna add a rectangle inside of here. And for this rectangle, I want to set its width to the width of the screen. Of course, you could do this, or we can type in a function. Uh, it falls underneath the system info, and that's going to be SI in parentheses, R width. And make sure you close it up. So 720, and that's going to automatically make it the width of the screen. And now I'm just going to bump the height to where it's going to be big enough to uh, fall. You know, this top part, we're going to, it's going to be behind the status bar. And then we're going to see the rest of it below it. So uh, let's try 100. I'm just going to check that real quick before I apply color. And that looks good to me. So, you know, all, all we're really seeing is, is about half of it, roughly, give or take. So back inside of here, let's go ahead and change the color of that rectangle. We'll do a black. That way it blends in very nicely with the default bar. And now what we need to do is apply inside of this overlap group that I've called bar, I need to put my three pieces of text. I'm gonna do each one individually. So my first one, I will do today's date. That's gonna be a DF function, a date format function. And I'm just gonna use this one right here. I'm going to delete the years. I'm cool with just three letters of the month showing, and I'm just going to put the days or whatever day of the month it is. I'm going to do DD for padding of zero, and that padding of zero will also take care of like if it's August 1st, it'll say AUGO1, but I'm cool with that like that. And now what I want to do with this one is I want to put it in the bottom left-hand corner of this overlap group because, remember, I have this sitting inside of that overlap group bar. I'm going to bump the size up to about uh, maybe 40 might be too big, but I'm going to test it out and see. Let's go to position for this text, and let's do the bottom left. That's going to put it at the bottom left of that rectangle because we have all this stuff inside of an overlap group. Let's apply some left padding to get it off of the left edge a little bit. That right there looks pretty good. Let's save this. Let's go back to the home screen and that looks just fine. It's not cut off by the default status bar. So I'm happy with that. Now, while we're inside of this one, let's go ahead and apply a touch to this. And when we touch this date, we want to toggle that global switch that we created. And I'm gonna talk more about that global switch in a minute. So global switch go and I want to make it the date. So whenever I touch this, it's always going to set that global switch to date, always. 
Yeah, we could use a text global here, but if you're just getting started with KOWP, this is the easiest approach to getting this animation to work correctly. So I'm done with this one. I'm just going to copy and paste to maintain my same text size. And if you had colors or fonts, you know, all those properties still hold. So now I have another text item. I'm going to position this one in the center. Actually, no, not the center. I want to do the bottom. That way it puts it at the center, but at the bottom of the overlap group. I'm going to take away that left padding and I'm going to name this one inside of text. I'm just going to do the current temperature. So underneath weather info, I'm going to do that first one right there, 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Now remember, since we copied from this, we have to change the touch of this one. So if I go to touch, the touch is already applied, but now I want to make it become weather. So if I ever touch this temperature here, it will make the global switch go become weather. And now let's add one more text item. I'm copying and pasting. And this is, I'm going to position in the bottom right. So now we have this 75 degrees over here. And let's just change this to alarm. All right, there we go. And I'm going to apply some right padding now to bump this over to the left. So there is our bar. Let's save that. Whoops, I got to apply one more thing. Touch. Global switch, I need to set that global switch now to alarm because that's that third piece. So now I have all three pieces set up and let's just look. So there's our extended status bar. So back in KOWP, let's work on creating our rectangle that's going to slide out when we touch this thing here. So remember, when we touch this right here, it's going to change that global switch go, it's gonna change it to date, all right? So going back into our route, let's create an overlap group. I'm going to call this overlap group my date group, I guess we could say. And inside of this date group, let's add a rectangle. And there's our rectangle. Right now it's a square. What I want to do with this one, I'm going to create three rectangles and I want them to be all the equal width. So I'm going to use that same code, but I'm going to divide it by three since I'm going to create three rectangles. So I'm going to do SI, R width close that up and then divide it by three and then close up with my dollar symbol. So this is gonna create a rectangle that's gonna be one third of the width of the whole screen. Let's position this in the top left corner and make sure I'm inside of my, don't position the rectangle itself, position the entire overlap group, be careful there. So date group, let's position that thing in the top left. That's gonna put it up here. And now I'm just gonna go back to that rectangle inside of this overlap group, and I'm going to make the height however long or tall I want it to be. Um, I think 500 will be just fine. And let's go ahead and go to paint, and let's set its color to black. So now we have that rectangle, but it's hiding uh, the, you know, the whatever the date was over here. So what we can do there is we can just come back to here and we can take this date group and slide it in root. We can slide it above bar, which technically puts it behind the status bar. So just like that, we have um, our date group, but now we need to talk about animations and stuff like that. So I'm just gonna come inside of here real quick and I'm just going to uh, go to its animation inside of this date group. And the only time I want to see this thing is if it's equal to date. Um, remember, we got that global switch. That global switch has four items in that go list global. It has bar, date, weather, and alarm. The only time I want to see this thing is if it, that global switch is equal to date. If it's not equal to date, I want it to slide off the screen. Listen to what I just said there. If that global switch is not equal to date, I want it to slide off the screen. Well, that's exactly what we're gonna do here in this code. So let's go to its animation, react on a formula, and the formula is going to be what I just said, but except we got to type it in, you know, the, the KOWP function way. So dollar symbol, if that global variable go, that list global, if it's not equal, notice exclamation point equal, if it's not equal to date, I want to animate this thing forward, which is essentially going to take it off the screen. I'm going to slide it off the screen if our global variable is not equal to date. Otherwise, I want to bring it back. So I'm using an F. You can use F or one, you can use zero or B. I'm going to do forward and back. But think of this as when it's not equal to date, when that global variable go is not equal to date, I'm going to slide it forward. In this case, that means it's going to go off the screen. Well, if it is equal to date, I'm going to bring it back. 
Think about it like that. So what we're gonna do here, as you can see, we already have an animation going on. I want this thing to slide up this way. And in this case here, the angle is going to need to be 270 degrees. So I'm just gonna click on that angle and I'm gonna type in 270. Now let's test that out with the play button. And as you can see, it is sliding off, but maybe it's sliding a little bit too much. So that's where we can adjust this speed a little bit. I'm gonna try, let's try 50. You might not want it sliding too far off. Let's see if that's gonna go all the way off the screen. Not quite. It's not gonna go all the way behind that bar rather. So how about 60? I think 60 is gonna be plenty. And then just to give it a little bit of flair, I guess you could say we're gonna do some overshoot. So as you can see, that bar is sliding behind this status bar we made. Remember, cause we, we changed the layer. Uh, we put this rectangle that slides in and out right here. We put it behind the status bar. So what, to give it a little bit of flair, I'm gonna do some overshoot. And basically what this is going to do is when it animates in and out, it will uh, have a little bounce to it, so to speak, even though we have a bounce one. Duration, let's cut it down to about five. That way it'll be a little bit snappier and quicker. Of course, you don't have to do that. That means half a second. And the only other thing I wanna add in here, sure, inside of this date group, we can add some text. Uh, for now, you know, I'm not gonna get into all the stuff of, of messing with the calendar, but I'm just gonna say, hey, uh, date stuff here. All right, so this is where our date stuff goes, whether it be calendar information or whatever. But what I do want to show you and emphasize to you here is this. We wanna put a button down here to close this in the event that we don't wanna open up one of these. That might not make much sense right now, but let's go ahead and add that inside of this overlap group. So I'm gonna add a font icon for that. And the font icon I'm gonna add is just some type of random arrow. I'll do this one right here, this arrow upward. Okay, and let's position this in the bottom of the overlap group. So it's gonna put it at the bottom of that overlap group since we have it sitting inside of there. Now, when I touch this arrow, I want to set that global switch go. I wanna set it to bar. So toggle global switch, go, and let's set it to bar. Now we've spent all of our time working on this, but yet we really haven't seen the animation in action. Well, there's a couple of things. I'm gonna go ahead and save this. I'm gonna go back to the home screen just so we can see this bigger. And if I touch any of these, remember how we have already applied touches? I'm clicking on them and nothing's happening because I haven't created those groups yet. But if I click on this one, we have an animation going on. Now suppose I click on 75 degrees, it's going to close that up because of the way we had it coded. Remember the code we said, if it's not, well right now, when I click on that, it is equal to date. So it's gonna bring the animation back to how I had it originally. But if I click here or here, the global switch, that list global go, is not gonna be equal to date. So it's gonna move that animation forward. In this case, it's gonna scroll it up and off behind the status bar. So let me click over here. As you can see, it is going away. But if I click back here again, it does open. If I want to completely close this thing without opening another one, I can click this now and it's just gonna set that global back to bar because that's what happens when we click this arrow. It sets it back to bar, which means nothing else is gonna be displayed. Now let's go back into KOWP and we can fix these other ones real quick by copying and pasting and just changing a few things here. So back into root, I'm gonna take the date group, the entire piece, and we'll copy and paste and I'm going to rename this one the weather group. All right. Now for this weather group, we want to position this one in the top. That's gonna to put it right here, but notice now we have it again in front of our status bar. So what we need to do there is go back to root, take our weather group and just slide it above bar. That's going to slide that right there. As you can see, that temperature did pop back up. So let's go into this weather group. Let's just change the text and let's just say uh, weather stuff here. You know, you can put whatever type of weather information you want. Hopefully that won't be too long. It is a little bit too wide, so I'll just enter down here or you can adjust the width, but I'm not after, again, going into all that detail there. So there's our weather stuff. There's some things we have to change about this. We do not want to change this arrow right here. That arrow, we want this arrow at the bottom of all of them so we can quickly close something without having to open something else up. However, what we need to change is the animation of the entire overlap group that we have now called weather group. So over to its animation, all we have to change is going to be this part of the code right here. If GVGo is not equal to weather, we want to move the animation forward, which means we're gonna move it off the screen 
And if it is equal to weather, we want to bring it back to where it was originally. So just like that, that animation should work now. And now just to go ahead and uh, kind of keep that rhythm going, let's take that weather group, let's copy, let's paste, and let's create our alarm group. So what I did here is I just quickly uh, changed it, the alarm group. And inside of that alarm group, I did change its position to the top right. That way we can put it over here. And you may not see it because I just went ahead and made these quick edits. I changed the text to alarm stuff here. I did not change anything there. I went to the animation for scroll. I changed the code to alarm. So that's what we've really been changing in terms of uh, toggling and making sure that the animations applied correctly depending on what that list global value is, whether it be bar, date, weather, or alarm. So if it's not equal to alarm, I want this thing to go uh, forward, which means I'm going to take it off the screen. And if it is equal to alarm, I want to bring it back. I want to bring it back. So let me check that and let's just uh, click through these real quick. So there's our uh, date stuff. Let's click on the alarm now. It's going to animate that one. Let's click on weather. And as you can see, it's taking the other one out because of the way we've coded this stuff. You know, if th what makes this one go away? If our global variable is not equal to weather. So if I click on alarm, it's the way I had that alarm set to touch back at the beginning of the video, that's what's changing that list global variable. And then again, at any point in time, if you just want to close them all out, you know, we can click these little arrows here to automatically close them. And to show you that further without going back to the home screen, let's go over to the globals real quick. So let's go into our globals and let's manually change these inside of here. So this list global that I have here, if I change this to weather, notice it's bringing out the weather one because it's bringing the weather back to how we originally created it. Now, if I change this to date, it's gonna bring the date one out, but it's gonna take the weather one and put it up. If I change this to alarm, it's going to bring the alarm out and take the other ones and throw them back up behind everything. So that's what these, uh, the way we have triggered these touches, and then there's one more too. If I change it to bar, it's gonna close whichever one it had, because remember, these little arrows here are set to touch and set this go variable equal to bar. Whereas the, these up here across the top, this is set to change it to weather. Of course, we don't actually see that down here. It won't apply it in the word, but it is actually happening as you can see. So, you know, there you have it. That's how you can create an extended status bar that has little quick menus that you can toggle out and edit your settings and stuff like that. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.